Welcome to More Than Words, a podcast about treating the whole child brought to you by the Reading and Language Learning Center. I'm your host, Tristan, and today I'm joined by RLLC co-owner and dyslexia specialist, Susan Danker, to discuss structured literacy. Hi, Susan. How are you? I'm great. How are you today, Tristan? I'm great. We're really happy to have you, the one of RLLC's co-owners here, to be on the podcast. So Fantastic. let's just start by having you introduce yourself. Sure. So I'm Susan Danker, and I'm one of the co-owners of the Reading and Language Learning Center. Um, and I've always loved reading myself, and I've been very fortunate that I've been able to create a position as a speech-language pathologist, and my position allows me to share that love of literacy with others. That's awesome. Glad we can share the gift of reading with folks here. So let's start with the interview. So we're talking about structured literally, literacy today, excuse me. So can you just start by explaining to the audience what that even means? Absolutely. So in the most simple term, structure literacy is an approach that's based on the science of how kids learn to read. And reading truly is a science. Um, secondly, the skills are taught in a direct way and in a logical order. And third, it is especially helpful for kids that are struggling with dyslexia. However, it benefits all children learning in the classroom. Yeah. And, you know, a more thorough definition um, through like the International Dyslexia Association, when they describe structured literacy approaches, they talk about, again, it has to, it emphasizes highly explicit and systematic teaching of all the important components of literacy. And these components include both foundational skills and the higher level literacy skills. So maybe I can just talk briefly about those two different areas. Yeah. Um, yeah. So oftentimes um, the foundational skills are going to be things like decoding. So looking at the words and being able to break them apart, sound them out. So the phonological awareness piece, um, as well as spelling. And then the higher level literacy skills include reading comprehension and that written expression comes in at that point. Okay. So what's the purpose of structured literacy? Why, why do we bother? Right. So for years, reading has been taught in various ways in schools and some kids that are naturally just going to catch on, caught on. And then the kids that, you know, maybe they have dyslexia or they just um, were a little slower to catch on. It didn't work for them. Maybe they had language um, delays or articulation delays that made learning in a different way difficult. But structured literacy basically prepares students to decode, that's break those words apart right. um, in an explicit and systematic manner. And it helps the kids obviously the ones that have dyslexia, it's really going to benefit them because of the way that it is explicit and it moves from one day to the next um, in a very systematic order. And in reality, all of the research has shown us that there's evidence that using a structured literacy program is effective for all kids learning to read. Right. Wow. Well, that's Sounds like it needs to be in schools. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we're getting yeah. there. We're getting yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned research. So I wanted to know, do you have numbers on like the kids that have difficulty learning to read? Because I'm sure it's like not small. Yeah. So the research shows that learning to read is a challenge for almost 40% of kids. So oh that's a pretty big number yeah. right there. Right. Um, but the good news is that with early help, most reading programs can be overcome. Um, however, the bad news <laughs> on the flip side of that is that nearly half of parents who notice that their child is having trouble, they tend to wait a while, sometimes even up to a year or longer before getting help. Yeah, that has to be frustrating for the kid at, mm -hmm. after that point. So sure. what, I mean, what happens at that point after like, you know, waiting a year or so when they don't get the early help in elementary school? Right. Unfortunately, the older that the child is, the more difficult it is to teach him or her to read. Um, and that's usually because they tend to develop some ineffective strategies mm -hmm. um, in an attempt to get by. 
And it can be difficult at times to undo those in therapy. And we do know that if children can't read well by the end of third grade, the odds are that he or she won't be able to catch up. And obviously, at that point, the emotional effects of falling behind and feeling like a failure become very devastating to the child. Um, And then we oftentimes see behaviors and acting out and not wanting to go to school. Um, So it's just so important to get on that early identification um, and get them some help sooner than later. Right. So what should parents do if they start seeing that their child is struggling? Mm -hmm. So if parents notice that there's any delay or, you know, the child doesn't like reading, um, it's always best to not hesitate. Um, That early identification is so critical. Um, And many times parents will wait because they'll hear sometimes from a doctor or even the teachers at times will say, oh, don't worry, they'll catch up. This is normal. Um, Oftentimes we hear, oh, boys, they learn a little bit later. They take longer to learn to read. Um, But these are all myths. And um, especially if there's family history, if anybody in the family has had speech and language delays or struggled themselves with reading or spelling. Um, So I always tell parents when they call to trust their gut instincts. If they have a feeling that something's going on, um, they really should do something at that point. And that could be even just getting a screening for dyslexia. Um, And then beyond that, it's really important to learn more, to educate themselves about um, reading difficulties. And there's so many different websites that can be looked at for that, one of them being the International Dyslexia Association's website, Nessie, N-E-S-S-Y, is a great website to look at as well. And then lastly, um, to move forward with having your child evaluated either by your school district or finding a private evaluator that specializes in dyslexia. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for the the websites. I'll put those in the show notes so mm-hmm. people can find them. Um, Great. And you said educated, like parents need to like educate themselves. And so therefore you want them to provide more of like a strong literacy foundation at home. Mm-hmm. So how important is it for parents to do that and how do they go about doing it? Yeah, it's a great question. It's really important for parents to initially provide um, that early literacy foundation. And um, looking back at research, they talk about even the first months of life, the children's experience with language and literacy can begin. And this does begin to form their later reading success. Wow. So yeah, even um, the research shows um, parents reading to children as young as six weeks um, is very beneficial. Wow. So yeah, the more um, the more exposure the children have to books, whether they're picture books or just listening to stories, it's giving them that exposure to language. And the more exposure they have um, to language and literacy before they arrive at school, they're going to be better equipped to succeed in reading. Right. Wow. So what skills would you say are included in a strong literacy foundation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we think about um, strong literacy foundation, um, the skills would include, but we're not going to limit them just to oral language skills. So this is going to be their vocabulary as well as their phonological awareness, um, their ability to manipulate sounds and create rhyming words and um, match pictures of rhyming um, cards. Like if we have a cat and a hat, being able to put those two together and knowing that those um, those two words sound similar. Right. Um, their motivation to learn and appreciate literature in different forms. So these can be those picture books. These can be, you know, books, small books, um, the pop out books, different things yeah. like that for the kids, just making it fun. We always want to make literacy fun. Right. And then their print awareness and letter knowledge. And a lot of times um, parents will tell us like, oh, he knows all of his ABCs. And well, that's great, but that's not that important. But what's more important is knowing the sounds that those letters and the alphabet make. Right. Yeah. 
And then, of course, um, we get knowledge through different experiences. So right. owning books, having lots of books in the house, um, having access to books, whether it's in a preschool classroom or their elementary rooms, um, they should be encouraged to read often. And I know that can be hard, especially in today's world where kids want their phones, right? They want a device to play on. Yeah. Um, but having some designated time where everybody's going to put down devices and pick up a book or pick up um, some form of text to read. It can be a newspaper, a magazine. Um, it can be cartoons. But looking at print um, and pictures is very helpful. Um, it's great, like if you can do it as a family, but um, for kids seeing others, you know, practicing reading and writing and enjoying it, that's really helpful. And the biggest takeaway is that we want the kids to understand that there's value um, of literacy and it is a piece of communication. Yeah. And one quick question. Would you say that like e-readers are a similar way to get like a good way to get print or are they just another device that's a distraction? No, that, that's can be great too. Um, we just, we want to make sure that they can't just access um, like Roblox or something right. like that. Some fun kind of game where they, right. you know, you think they're reading along, but now they're, <laughs> they're playing one of their favorite <laughs> games. Yeah. Um, don't mean to just pick on that particular game, but I know <laughs> my nephews in particular, they, they love it. Love that game. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of other children, they're, they tell me all the time how they play with that, um, <laughs> that system and meet their friends online and right. all the fun things. So, we, so yeah, yeah, that's fine too. And audiobooks are great too. Being yeah. able just to listen while people are in the car, taking a road trip or, you know, going back and forth to practices and things like that. Right. What One time, I mean, as a full grown adult, but my family was on a road trip and there was a book we all wanted to read together and my mom read it the whole way and it was like mm -hmm. it was such an engaging way to like make a really long road trip go by very quickly and we all had a great mm -hmm. time so yeah. i'm sure as a child that would have been amazing too <laughs> right yeah mm -hmm. do you like audiobooks these days like does I, that kind of spark your do I yeah. that or do you prefer to read on your own i prefer to read on my own, but it depends. So mm -hmm. sometimes audiobooks are nice in the car. Um, when I know that I'll have a, like a longer amount of time in the car, it's nice. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a podcast that, like you know, I feel like modern day podcasts are similar to listening to an audiobook. You get like a really nice story on your drive if you don't want to listen to music. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what are the long-term effects of poor literacy skills? Yep. So literacy goes far beyond the ability to read a book or to write a letter. And illiteracy can cause immeasurable damage to an individual's emotional and um, intellectual development. And often it'll limit the person's ability to have a, or to achieve a fulfilling and successful adult life. Um, as adults, literacy skills are needed in our everyday life, right? So we go to the grocery store, um, we have to look at labels or recipes, we have to read what we need to put in there um, to fill out job applications. And even while we're driving the car, um, we come upon road signs and um, need to be able to navigate um, driving. And, you know, it's, if we think about all of those things that we can if we can work with students early on, we can alleviate some of those struggles. Because can you imagine struggling with those parts of your daily life? Right. Be very yeah. difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, so do you, yes, yeah, go go, I was just going to say, do you have any <laughs> success stories that you want to share with us? Yes. Um, if I can just briefly share a story with you. Um, last summer, um, a recent undergraduate student reached out asking to come to work at the clinic. And this is pretty typical. We often get many requests like this, but what made this applicant's request stand out was that over 10 years ago, we taught her twin sister to read. Um, yeah, it was really cool to hear from her. Um, and this um, new graduate, she saw the benefits of the early intervention that we provided and how the structured literacy approach that we used made such a difference for her sister's life. 
that it also inspired her to um, take the career path of becoming a speech pathologist as well. Wow. And her twin sister, um, you know, this little girl that we helped all those years ago, she took advanced courses um, all during high school and can proudly say that she is a Penn State graduate. Wow. That is fantastic and really exciting, I'm sure, for her. Yep. So again, it's that her the parents had a an intuition and you know they were told they could wait and she likely would catch on. Um, but the parents sought out the private services and um, you know, really changed not only the student's life, but the whole family's life. And right. we inspired one to become an SLP, SLP. <laughs> which is even even better. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, Susan. We, uh, you know, love having the the RLC co-owners on the podcast because it just makes it a little extra special. Um, So thanks for sharing all about structured literacy with us today. Thanks, Tristan. It was great. Yeah, no problem. And thank you so much to the audience for listening. Make sure to subscribe and leave us a little rating and review. It helps other folks find the podcast and we'll chat with you next time. 